U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Lucas Sifka grew up on 10 acres of Greenbelt on the Puget Sound of Washington State. My first week of high school um, was when 9-11 happened, and that really influenced me, uh, as well as a lot of my friends. I wanted to be a, you know, a pilot, and I wanted to be a police officer, and I wanted to be a firefighter, and I, you know, it kind of changed from week to week, but I always wanted to serve. I ended up going to uh, Washington State University for uh, three years. I realized that my heart wasn't really in school and that I wanted to get out in the real world and, you know, make a difference. Luke enlisted in 2009 and went through infantry training at Fort Benning. Within a year, he was deployed to Iraq. Luke was glad to be a soldier but wanted a more specialized role. He returned to the United States and took part in the Army Small Arms Championship. An excellent marksman, Luke placed very highly and was sent to sniper school. And that's when I like really felt at home. You know, small unit, the people who were there wanted to be there. While on leave, Luke met a young woman named Kate. They immediately hit it off. I mean, that whole next week I came home after our dates and my mom was like, who are you? I've never seen you this girly and giddy. It was just, it was there. I mean, because I grew up in the military, I always said I'm, I'm never going to date anybody in the military, but that's what I knew. And I mean, he was pretty good looking, so I couldn't have picked anybody better, really. He just, he did it. We did it for a very short time. Uh, I think we dated for like six weeks. You know, our only option was get married or do the long distance thing. So we decided to get married so that we could stay together. In 2013, Luke and Kate's son Wyatt was born. Six weeks later, Luke was deployed to Afghanistan. That was tough. I was there just long enough to get really attached and then, you know, had to leave. But, uh, you know, got a job to do. Luke's experience in Afghanistan proved to be far different than his deployment to Iraq. Where we were at um, in Logar province, uh, we were taking indirect fire three or four times a day. Luke and his team provided precision fire support to other units across Afghanistan. While on overwatch outside a village, Luke engaged multiple enemies from a hilltop position. He descended the backside of the hill to regroup with his infantry company when he stepped on an IED. And I didn't realize that I was um, hurt badly until the medic came to me and started uh, putting the tourniquets on. Usually you put the tourniquet at the lowest point and he went straight for the femoral artery. And that's when I thought about, you know, Wyatt and, you know, I can't die out here. Um. Luke was evacuated to Germany where he was stabilized for the trip to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Maryland. Luke would undergo dozens of surgeries but as he made progress in his rehabilitation, new limitations became painfully clear. I couldn't hold Wyatt until my hands healed because all the bones were broken in my hands. I couldn't put him in my lap. It's tough, like, you know, you go from being self-sufficient and in good shape and, you know, the head of the household and the next thing you know, like, you, you can't feed yourself, you can't bathe yourself, you can't drive or, cook or anything. I met Luke for the first time in 2014 while he was going through prosthetics training at Walter Reed. There's kind of three types of people that come to visit Walter Reed. There's the people that have to be there because it's their job, like a senator. There's the people that are coming there, like the sports figures that want to take a picture and, you know, post it online and get the PR from that. And there's the people who don't announce that they're coming and don't bring an entourage, and they just show up and talk to people, and that was Gary. It's a very clear difference between the people that want to be there and the people that have to be there. And he's definitely the, the type of guy that wants to be there. And then I got a phone call out of the blue, and it was Gary. And he said, hey, I want to build you a house. It was kind of like this, this wave of you know, relief came over us. Luke chose to live in New Braunfels, Texas, right down the street from two other Rise Home recipients, Travis Green and Guillermo Tejada. Couldn't ask for a better situation than that because you've you know, you immediately got people that you've got common ground with and understand you know, what you've been through. Anything that makes you feel normal is good. With the support of independent community donations, the Gary Sinise Foundation 
began construction on Luke's specially adapted smart home, and on June 15, 2017, Luke and his family moved in. <laughs> it's perfect. Just looking at the laundry room and saying, holy cow, he can do this now. Every little thing that you can't do reminds you that you're hurt. So having things that are specifically built for you can help you feel independent. There's something really healing about being able to take care of yourself. You know, being able to get the glasses out of the cupboard may seem like a really small thing, but I mean, it's just, it's amazing. The halls are wide, so I can turn around mid hallway if I need to. Having all the doors flush to the ground is a lifesaver. I can't tell you how many times I've hit an edge or a lip or something and gotten thrown out of my chair. None of this was here, and it wouldn't be here without the foundation. Me personally, I know four or five guys now that have foundation homes. I mean, what does that tell you? I mean, other than like what they're doing. Luke and Kate are looking forward to watching their son Wyatt grow up in their new home. At the Gary Sinise Foundation, we serve our nation by honoring our defenders, first responders, their families, and those in need. To learn more about the Gary Sinise Foundation and how you can support other veterans like Luke Sifka, visit GarySiniseFoundation.org.